So it's the 13th. Unfavorite cross. Broaden that back of the thigh, the buttock away from the sits bones. Use your arms to help lift yourself up. Roll the shoulders back, move your shoulder blades deepen to your back. Remove your glasses if you have them. Lift up. Uh, there's sort of an indentation here right below your ribs. Um, next to your navel, lift that up. Feel as though that is lifted. Can you feel that? And then keep that as you bring your hands to your heart. Look straight ahead and close your eyes completely. Take time here after you've done all the mechanical things that you know to do to sit up straight and follow that plumb line from the crown of your head to your tailbone. Ascend from the tailbone to that um, crown of the head. So after you've done all those mechanical things, be with yourself, nowhere else. Completely connect yourself to you. Smooth, soft inhalation. Smooth, soft exhalation. Keep lifting the side body. Keep drawing the shoulders back, shoulder blades forward. Be with yourself. If you'd like, you may say the invocation silently in your head or out loud. Everybody is muted, so that doesn't matter. Or just the three ohms, but be with yourself. Be steady with yourself. Be completely with yourself. Now your last longer, complete inhalation, followed by the exhalation, bowing the head down towards your heart. And gratitude for this practice and for our time together this morning. And release your hands on your legs and slowly lift the head. Okay, that was your least favorite cross. Um, get rid of your support. Mm. My glasses back on. Change your cross and have your block nearby. I'm going to have it on the second height. Okay, I'm going to go back there and move that buttock flesh nice and wide away from the buttock area. <clears throat> I'm still your mirror image, so take your block off to the side. So the inside of your block to your right, the inside of your block is lined up to your inner knee. Okay, now turn the trunk, place one hand on the brick, start to go forward. Now the other hand on the brick, start to go forward, look forward. Imagine you are taking both of those sides of your trunk forward. Now you, you can feel, at least I can feel, that this side is shorter. So I wanna use that hand for just a moment and lengthen that side. That would be your right side. This side is automatically automatically going to feel longer. So I lengthen. Keep looking forward. Don't change your legs. Keep this down. Release deeply in the grinds. This is a hip thing. Okay, then inhale, come off. Place the block on the other side so that the inside of the block is just to the inside of your knee. 
Turn to your left. Turn as much as possible. Get ready and exhale forward. It's nice if you have something where you can slide that block forward. Okay, now this side is, is a little stuck. So, I'm sorry, this side is a little stuck. So I'm gonna use my, your left hand to help me turn and extend that side and then go forward. Keep looking forward. Keep the inner thigh soft. Look forward. Adho Mukha Swastikasana. I'm just having you look forward instead of head down. So the looking forward, the sternal notch forward helps me keep both sides of my trunk long. Don't come off this way. Mm. Okay, then come back to the center and just a very brief Upavishta Konasana. So if you're sitting at the back near the back edge of your mat, your legs can go just go out to the side. Use your hands to pull the hamstring back to the buttock crease. Hamstring toward the buttock crease. Calf towards the heel. Calf towards the heel. Press your thighs down. Okay, and don't change your legs, but turn your palms out either 90 degrees or sideways, either way, and lift your trunk up. Press the thighs down. Bird Bahastasana in Upavishtra Konasana. Inhale, reach the arms up, keep the abdomen back. Okay, and now start to come forward. Don't change your legs. We're just coming to our elbows. Start to come forward. Don't change your legs. So if, if your legs start rolling, and the dancers in this class will say, yeah, my legs start rolling, as mine do. So I I'm, I'm may not get to my elbows if my legs roll. So you have to be your own teacher here. And look, how the, don't let those legs change. As you start to come forward, maybe I just come to my elbows, but I look forward. To, to keep extending the two sides of my trunk forward. Look forward. I'm just on my elbows, or you may not be. You may be here. This is fine. Look up if you're here. Or here. Don't change the legs. Be on your inner, uh, sorry, be on the middle of your heels. Okay, then come up. Bring the legs together. Stand up. I'm going to change the camera view just real quick here, see what I can see. Everything. Yeah. Okay. All right. The first pose is just Uttanasana with the wall. Okay, so hands are at my chest. Right? And you may have to do a trial run here. So feet hip distance apart. I press my feet firmly down into the floor. I stay on my heels. My hands are at my chest. I find the wall and I see if this is the right distance. I feel like I should walk back just a bit, maybe even just a couple inches. Hands at my chest. Place my hands at the wall. So there's my Uttanasana. I look forward, I keep pressing my, so the forefoot of my foot forward, the ball of the foot down, pull up my thighs, look forward. So I'm taking the trunk forward as the thighs stay back. Hamstring to bite, pull up, hamstring to bite. Press into the wall, look forward. Good shoulder opener as well. Look forward. Look forward. So, okay. Go a little wider, uh, Bob, if it's too tight with your shoulders now. You can go a little wider with your hands. You can even turn the hands out. Bev, work on your right hip a little bit. Right hip up. 
Okay. Inhale and come up. All right, so now hands gets a, a little bit harder, but I don't think so much harder. So now the hands are going to go to the chair seat. So I'm folding at this hip crease, folding forward, hands to the chair seat. So I'm, I'm, I know where I fold from, which is this hip crease. And now I'm going to take my hands forward and keep my arm uh, head between my arms. My legs are working. Pull up through the thighs. Hamstring to butt. Pull up. You can vary this. You can look forward and then down. Pull the abdomen up towards the spine. It's not hanging down like this. Pull the abdomen up towards the spine. Uttanasana with the chair. I've got to, I forgot to put my hair up. <laughs> and I drive me crazy. Stay there. Uttanasana with the chair. Okay, so you see the alignment there with the legs to the hips. Right? Okay, now inhale and come up. All right, so that was chair Uttanasana. So now you get a chair dog. So if chair Uttanasana was like this, right, then your chair dog, bring your hands to the front of the chair, turn the upper arms out, press on those inner edges of your palm, walk the legs way back, way back, way back. Press the hands forward, reach up through your arms, turn also um, Karen Higgins, that outer deltoid in, everybody, that outer deltoid in, and I feel I have to go back more. So I push on the chair and press those sides back. Chair Uttanasana. Press the heels down. Descend the back of the calves towards the heels. Uh, so Chaya, you're still doing Uttanasana. Legs have to walk way back, way back. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Press the tops of the thighs back. Okay. Inhale and come up. All right, have a seat, move your chair just slightly away from the wall, or in Karen Higgins' case, she is going to use the wall. So I could show, I'll show that in, in just a, well, I can show that first, I guess. So Karen doesn't have, she has a school, so let's, she doesn't have the chair back. So I call this my masthead work like the masthead on a ship. So the trunk, which you need to re remember, is the trunk is not vertical. It's not vertical. So where you sit in your chair depends on the relationship of the back of your chair to you. But so if you don't have a chair back, you're taking the hands back, by turning the palms out, and taking the, chair, the, the hands back. So this is, I'm too far away from the wall because I want to be, I don't want to be vertical. So here I am, and I lift, lift my chest. I'm a little bit more vertical. There, that's better, Karen, can you see? So my hands are turned out, my palms are out, and I need to release her so, and I push on the wall and lift my chest up. Mm. The rest of us who have a chair back, it's actually a little harder with, without the chair back. So you determine where you need to sit. It, it's not going to be way back, and it's not going to be way forward. It's kind of almost in the middle, but not quite. Reach your arms back so that your palm, the 
Heel of your hand reaches the back of the chair. Ooh, okay, here we go. <laughs> so here I am. I lift my chest up. The crease here is deeply creased, bending at the hips, and I lift my chest. I, I turn this upper arm deltoid back and in, shoulder blades in, and I lift my chest up. So can you see how I'm not vertical? And I lift my chest. Uh, those of you, any neck problems, any previous whiplash, stuff like that, you don't have to look up. You can just look straight ahead. But here I'm pressing, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm pressing on my chair bar, uh, fanning out my palms, and lifting the chest up. Big opening in the chest. How are we doing? All right, go for it, Bob. Bob, you use the, the chair bar, because you've got it. Turn your seat back like this. Yeah. And if you can give me a side view, Chai, I'd be happier. Yeah. How is it, Marsha? <laughs> Yeah, so roll those shoulders back. Move your shoulder blades deeper into your back and just lift your chest. Fold deeply at the hip crease. Groins down in towards the chair. How is it, Karen? That's okay. Yeah, nice, Beth. Yeah, that's it, Bob. Mm -hmm. I can't see Gay very well. Maybe Gay does not want me to see her. Okay. It's all right. Okay. Now, here's the real work. To take Gomukhasana arms. You may need a strap, right? You know whether you can do Gomukhasana arms. But the chair is going to help you. So, I repeat what we were just doing. And I keep, I'll, I'll do the left arm. Uh, down first, so I keep that left arm on the chair and <clears throat> reach the right arm up, take a hold of the middle of my back. So this arm is, is back there so much, and there I've caught, I'm in Gopakasana. Did you see that? Somebody sent me a message. No, okay. How are we doing? Yeah, whatever it takes. Head up, Bob, head up. From the bottom of your armpit chest, lengthen that elbow up towards the ceiling. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then release. Second side. So maybe your left arm stays back there, reach the right up. Right arm stays back there, the left arm is up, reach up, and then it stays back there, reach up, and catch. Lengthen the two sides of the trunk up, lift up. Should feel great. <laughs> this is an everyday pose. You guys always ask me, what are Cheryl's everyday poses? <laughs> nice. Try, try to get that um, up arm uh, completely vertical. A little bit more vertical. Reach that arm down your back. Okay. Right, now release from the hand. Now sit all the way back in your chair. I'm, I'm way back here, <laughs> way back here, and my um, heels are tugging the front to your legs. Help yourself roll those front thighs in, spread the backs of your thighs out. Okay, look forward, start to come forward. So you are extending the sides of your trunk quite in between your legs. Reach your arms way forward. Look forward. 
groin soft. If you can push your heel, inner heel, into that chair leg, the groins will become softer. Mm. Okay, so you looked forward all you, all you could to extend the trunk along those thighs, or you, you know, you can just feel the, the inner thighs with the sides of your chest, sides of your ribs. Okay, and then some of you can reach the back chair leg now and head down. You can either reach the sides of the chair or that back chair bar, whatever you've got. Grind soft. So it's basically chair malasana. Mm -hmm. Okay, inhale, come up. Now, some harsh vault and asana work with the chair. So put your chair back all along the wall. It's got to have some, or if, if uh, like, um, if, if both of you don't have a wall, just put your chair somewhere where you know it's not going to move. Okay, I call this oiling the hips. This would be good for, for those folks, us older folks who may have some hip stiffness problems. So I'm just going to slightly make a measurement. I turn my left foot out, put the right heel up on the chair, just on the edge of the chair, and step this back foot out more. Okay. Oil your hips. Watch. So this is, so it's like Vera one. Ten times. Got it? So you're really pushing into that heel up from here one. That back leg stays back and out, arms out. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Oil those hips. Really move. Bend and move. Bend and move. This is a, a carry a workout thing. So Chaya, your back leg has to go back more like Parjvottanasana. Bend. Yes, good. Bend as much as possible, Bob. Keep bending. Keep the hips parallel. All right, change sides. So your right foot slightly turned out. Put your left heel just on that chair edge. It's, you know, the, the top of the heel. I'm calling it the top of the heel. Step back. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Look at the railroad tie. <laughs> that is the inner and outer thigh, the inner and outer calf. And keep those railroad ties going in the same direction, staying parallel to each other. Yeah. If you haven't done this before, it's really, really good for your hips. Okay. Ready for the real work. Here we go. Take your strap. All right, so some of you, uh, everybody has a wall, right? So this is Utita Hastapanamushtasana. Have your strap. I, I, I have a rope ball here, but I'm just using it as a, as a wall. I'm not using it as a um, rope ball. So I, I'm standing in Tadasana. I bend up the right leg. I put the strap on the ball of the foot and put the foot on the wall. I've got a loop in my strap. 
Okay, so I have to stand up tall, tall, tall out of that left standing leg and lift the trunk up. Press the left thigh back, lift the trunk up. I can even turn my upper arms out and lengthen the trunk some more. Everybody pretty much there. Uh, Bob, see that your back, uh, your standing leg is not behind your hip. It's over your hip. Okay, so now, I, I keep this hip crease deep, right? If this hip is going down the hamstring to buttock, pulling back. And now watch as I bend the elbows out to the side. And I try to bring the trunk as close to the leg as possible. Look at your wall and look at your foot. Pull the hamstring to butt. Hamstring to butt. You have to press on that ball of the foot. You know, some of you, you still have your chair there. I imagine, Chaya, you can do this, right? To have that foot on that, that chair. Where you are here, it's it's gonna be quite subjective. You have to decide what, what's what's good for you, what's good for your uh, position. So here I am, and I'm the legs are staying back as the trunk pulls forward. Both sides of the trunk extending forward. Look at your foot, elbows bend wide, collarbones broaden. Okay, release, stand in Tanasana. One leg should feel taller, longer. That's the lifted leg. Okay, and then carefully, left foot on the wall. Notice which side is your stiffer leg. Hamstring to buttock. Railroad ties, legs, inner and outer, parallel to each other, hips parallel. Press the standing leg thigh back and pull up hamstring to buttock and move that buttock rim in, deep forward, deeply forward. Lift up, exhale, fold at that hip crease, fold at that hip crease and bend the elbows out to the side. Just look at your foot. You're pressing the foot so much into the wall with that ball and big toe mound that the elbows can really widen and help you broaden across the chest. How are we doing? We just have one, one wall there. <laughs> okay. Keep your strap nearby. That was Utita Hastapada Ustasana. Now for some partial Tanasana work with the chair. So the first one is, I'll have my right leg up so you can see it better. So my heel is up on the chair. My, this heel lines up to that instep. I step that thigh back. Right now, put your strap on your thigh crease. It's just a, a, a long strap, and I'm doing this. So, hamstring to buttock. I lengthen my trunk upwards. I don't know if you can see, but I've got the strap like this, and I'm pressing that hip crease down. So now, the trunk goes forward as the thighs pull back. Trunk goes forward as the thighs pull back. Yeah, nice. I can see the shapes of all of you. And everybody looks pretty good. So keep pulling hamstring to buttock, hamstring to buttock on the back thigh too, and get your trunk as close to that leg as possible. Front of the thigh to the back, back of the thigh. Okay, inhale and come up. 
put your right heel where your left heel was. Foot's turned out slightly. Step up with your left leg on that um, top of your heel on the chair's edge. Put your strap in the hip crease. Turn your hips to be parallel to one another. Look at the railroad ties that are your leg. Press the strap into that hip crease. Exhale, trunk extends forward as the thighs stay back. Trunk extends forward, thighs back. Roll those shoulders back, extend the two sides of the trunk forward. I kind of shake on my weaker side and that's okay. You just need to recognize that and make that leg work uh, more stronger for you. Okay, inhale, come up. You get ready to strap. Okay, now this position, a little bit trickier, but not terribly difficult. My front foot, so it'll be my right, so you can see more easily. Actually, this is okay. my front foot is maybe four to six inches away from the front legs of the chair. Now, how do you know where you need to be? And so your your uh, arm length versus your torso, torso length, leg length versus your torso length, all that's gonna come into play. So here I am in pre or Tita Parshval Panakonasana, uh, Tita Parshval Tanasana. So I turn my hips to be square to the chair, I press both thighs back and I fold at the hip crease and I bring both forearms to the chair. My head does not touch the chair, but I look forward, both thighs pulling up, hamstring to buttock, press that back thigh back, keep your hips parallel to one another, and look forward. So when the thighs are going back as the trunk is going forward. Keep your hips level. Press your forearms down into the chair. Forearms down into the chair. Can you have your forearms on the chair? Forearms on the chair, arms straight. Yeah, so you might have to adjust where you're standing. So as the thighs press back, the arms give you more support to take your trunk forward and to get your trunk closer to the leg. Pull hamstring to bike. Okay, inhale, come up. Change sides. Now your left foot goes maybe four, six inches away from your chair. So your right leg back. Utita Parshvakonasana. Turn your hips to be square. Press your right thigh firmly back. Pull the left thigh. Hamstring to butt. And exhale, fold at deeply at the hip crease. As the thighs go back, the trunk goes forward. Palms press, uh, forearms press on the chair. Press down on the chair, take the trunk forward. The head is just right in between your upper arms. Mm. Nothing should hurt at this point. <laughs> Nothing, I mean, this should feel good. Watch the abdomen that it doesn't just sink to the floor. It should pull up towards the spine. Don't hold your head up. Just keep it in line with your arms. Thighs pull back, trunk pulls forward. Or you might say thighs press back as the trunk 
extends forward. Okay. All right. Now, inhale, come up. So I'm going to show this next version, and some of you might um, want to repeat this this one. But I, if, just so don't move your chair just yet. But I'm going to move my chair out of the way slightly. This version of Parshvottanasana is called genuflection. <laughs> any any Catholics out there? So when the priests, it's usually one priest to another or a priest to the pope or whatever. In the olden days, they would genuflect, and that means to, to bend both knees. <laughs> right? So we're going to do a version of this genuflection, bending both knees to get the, the trunk fully on that front thigh. So just watch me first. So I'm in like I would be for partial tanasana. Okay, I'm going to bend both knees a lot. <laughs> then I'm going to put the trunk, so it's sort of like a lunge, put the whole trunk on that front thigh. My hands can support me. You can have blocks if you need them. Okay, hands can support me. Then, so then I keep this back leg bent until I know that my trunk is on that front thigh. Completely. Then it, the back thigh goes back. Okay, that was my more decent side. I'll show you. I'll show it to you again. And you have little bit bend in your knees, right? In front um, knees, little bit bend. Bend both knees big time. You see how much I'm bent? Then I bring the whole trunk over to lie on that front thigh. Give yourself some support if you need it here. And then, my trunk just stays on that thigh. And back. Yeah, fun, huh? Let's see how you do. So be in free Parshvottanasana. If you're already in it, that's fine. You can repeat it. Three parts of Uttanasana, bend both knees. Okay, and then keep that back knee bent. Well, front knee is going to stay bent. Bring that trunk down over your thigh. Then straighten the front leg a little bit faster than the back leg. Keep the trunk along the front thigh, and then straighten the back leg. Pull up that front thigh, hamstring to butt. So Bob, you should be able to get your head down at this point. So if the trunk make contact with the thigh in the genuflection version, yeah, nice Chaya. Bev, Marsha, yeah. Now be with yourself, find some quiet here. Straighten that front thigh. Pull up the hamstring to buttock. Hamstring to buttock. Now both legs are quite straight. The hips are squared, parallel to each other. Your railroad ties of your, uh, the, that, especially that front leg, back leg too. But you can see your front leg. All right, and now inhale and come up. Step your left leg forward, your right leg back. Okay, so turn the hips to be squared. Press the back thigh firmly back. This is just the Uttita version of partial tenacity. Now the genuflection, so you're bending both knees. Then come forward, lie your whole trunk down on that front thigh. Find the floor with something. Okay, and now be a little bit quicker about straightening the front thigh. You can keep that back knee bent a little bit. So your trunk stays in contact with that leg and then press that back thigh back. Head down. 
surrender towards that leg. Try to be on the inside edge of your back heel. Press the inner edge of your back heel down. Lift up hamstring to butt on that front thigh. That's the genuflection version of partial chinasana. Okay, so we can't. That's about all to work on your partial chinasana. Now bring your um, chair back to your place. Put that sticky mat over the front of the chair again. Okay, I'm going to show you the left side. It would be a shame not to do Uttita Parshva Konasana now because of all that opening in the groin, right? But now we're going to oil the hips again. So step your left heel top. I'm calling this the top of the heel. Top of the heel on the edge of the chair seat. Then make sure that your left um, instep is in line to your right foot. Okay, hands on your hips, turn your trunk to face forward and bend. So now you're oiling the hips again. Keep your trunk upright and turn to face forward. Your pelvis turn towards that back thigh. I was supposed to count to 10. So um, when, when you come up, Chaya, when you come up, you look like this to me. You look like this. I want you to look like this. Because the pose that we're going to be doing is Parshvakonasana, Utita Parshvakonasana. Okay, oil the second side. Put your left heel on the chair. I'm going to turn around so you can see this. Step that back leg way back. Mine's almost off my mat. Turn your trunk to face forward. Deepen this crease. So you can see my hand is here. Watch your railroad ties. <laughs> Don't let them go off track. Effective? Try to tuck the buttock under you more. Pull that uh, right pelvic area, un, you know, or buttock area under you more. If I have a side view of you, like I do, on a couple of you, yeah, I shouldn't really see that that front buttock going to the back side. It has to tuck under and move toward the pelvis. Okay, now go back to the front uh, first leg. Go way back with that back leg. All right, my, I'm going to keep my hand here. To, to roll that front thigh out. Then this hand goes inside the leg and grabs the ankle, foot. So you can see how it looks a little bit like partial konasana. And then I bring my hand to the top of my head, the back of my hand to the top of my head and reach the arm overhead. Woo. Push the chair to keep tucking that right buttock under you more. Turn that right side of your chest towards the ceiling. Yeah. Back leg back. Press it back. Away from you more, child. Press it away from you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Inhale, come up. Second side. Left heel up on the chair. 
walk that back leg away. Make sure that this heel is in line to that instep. Turn to face forward. As you start to bend, roll this thigh out. Deepen that hip crease. This is nice. I have a lot of shorts here, so I can pull that outer corner of my hip crease down towards the floor. Then I reach the hand on the inside. Arm behind the head, elbow back, and then overhead. Extend the side body as you did in Parshvottanasana. Keep turning those ribs, those bottom ribs towards the top ribs. The back ribs have to turn towards the wall behind you. Turn those back ribs. Make, you know, find out where you're working and where you need to work more or less. Tuck that left buttock under you more. All right, inhale, come up. Okay. I'm just gonna move my sticky mat. Oh, sorry, my chair away from the space. And now for the standing pose work. Um, all right, watch first. This is a different, a little bit, I don't know. Um, Different way to work on coming into Adho Mukha Shwanasana. So I place my hands <coughs> the front of the mat. I walk my knees slightly back. My toes are already tucked. So the key, there's a, the key should be to, a few things to look at. How my uh, middle finger should point straight ahead. <clears throat> I turn my inner upper arms. Now watch. I'm going to bring my weight over my hands, okay? And I'm going to keep my weight. I'm going to, you know, right now, if I go back here, there's no weight on my hands. So here, I feel a lot of weight on my hands. So I want to keep that weight pushing away, right? I'm going to push that weight, weight, weight back. Tuck my toes, and then I'm going to bend the knees a lot, and I'm going to keep that weight forward. Now, I feel all that weight. My knees are off the floor, and I lift the hips way up high. I keep that weight. Mm. Lift, press the tops of the thighs back. Okay. Now, now, if you've lost the weight, you don't feel the weight in your hands anymore, come back, put it in the hands. Keep it in the hands. Press those knuckles. Press those knuckles. Push back. Push back. And then slowly press the tops of your thighs back. Pull the abdomen up towards the spine. Press the tops of your thighs strong. <clears throat> Turn the, the backs of your thighs from inside out. All right, and now rest in Adho Mukha Virasana. Okay, come up. One more shot at Adho Virasana. So, you know, kind of kneel up a little bit and pull your hamstrings toward the buttocks. Hamstring to buck. Okay, go wide enough that you can feel the sides of your trunk on your inner thighs. Don't change this. Keep the buttocks down. Keep wherever your contact is with the buttocks on the heels, keep it there. Start to come forward. I'm gonna hold the edges of my sticky mat and pull that area back and down so my tailbone stays tucked under. Okay, then I, I, I extend the trunk forward, head down, and reach the arms forward. Mm -hmm. 
Core and soft, quiet. Be with yourself here. This, you know, the forward bends are, are very introspective. They're calming, soothing to the central nervous system. You all know that from years of practice. But oftentimes we, we run away from our pains. And I'm here to tell you, if we resist, the pain will persist. So don't resist. Try to deepen that fold in the front of the thighs. Let the groins go back and down. Okay, one more time. You get a chance at uh, redemption for one last auto with our Shwanasana. So I'm coming forward, walking my knees slightly back from my hips, putting all my weight in my hands. Turn my inner upper arms out, my deltoids uh, pulling back and in, tuck my toes, come up with knees bent. I feel a lot of weight in my, my hands. That's good. I keep the weight in my hands. Keep the weight in my hands. Push, 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 push. And exhale back down. It does not matter where your heels are as long as the tops of your thighs are pressing back. Press into those knuckles more and more as you reach up the side body, reach up the sides of your hips, press the thighs back. All right, and then inhale and release. All right, so um, those of you who practice regular Shirshasana, if, if Doug was here today, he'd be going, yay. <laughs> But if you don't, you can do uh, the prep with me, or you may do regular shirshasana. So if you're doing regular shirshasana, uh, do you need me to show? Yes? No? Thumbs up if you want. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So um, you know what? Let's all do the prep together, and then I'll show. And those of you who aren't pursuing regular shirshasana, or Karen needs to go get her, her props for shirshasana, her two chairs, then or her stools, then she's doing that, and the rest of you can do prasarya bhattana. So let's all do the prep. I've been doing the prep every time I do shirshasana, and it has made my shirshasana so much stronger. So watch. I take my arms, and I, I, I'm turning this front of the forearm skin towards the floor. So I take that there, okay? So I'm letting the sticky mat catch that front of the forearm skin. And then I interlock my fingers webbing to webbing. I look at my thumbs, I press the forearms down, and I walk up. I keep looking at my thumbs, and I walk up. I press the thighs back, and I look at my thumbs. So it's 30 seconds here. Come down, rest. 30 seconds, oh, change the cross of your hands. I do that all again. Walk up, one leg. 30 seconds here. Or, you know, whatever you can manage. <laughs> 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Work your way up. One week you do 10 seconds. The next week you do 15 seconds and so on. And then the last one, look at your hands, look at your thumbs, left leg. So I keep my forearms pressing so much to lift my back up, to lift my leg up. So you're either doing that. Did everybody do it with me? No. Nope. Okay, let's do it. So you did both legs first already, uh, Bob? Okay. Good child. Keep looking at your thumbs and move your shoulder blades deeper into your back and up, up towards your tailbone. 
That was a good uh, <coughs> self correction, Beverly. All right, and now exhale down. Cross your palms and rest your head on your palms. In between the sides. Okay, change the cross of your hands. Get that under, that, that bottom of the forearm skin to, to uh, spread. Look at your thumbs and now walk up. Walk up, walk up, and now lift your right leg up. Press the top of the right thigh. In fact, lift the inner leg more than the outer leg, Chaya. Inner leg, inner leg, lift. Up, up, up. Straighten both legs. All right, and then come down, rest. One more time, have a rest. This will make you stronger, guys. It will, it will make your shirshasana so much stronger. All right, last time you go back to the first, your favorite cross of your hands. Your thumb tips are just, you know, barely touching or they might go one on top of the other. Look at your thumbs, straighten the legs and walk up. Walk up all the way, lift your hips, walk up all, the, all that you can. So Kathy, move your back away from the wall. Keep moving the shoulder. Yes, now stay there. And now lift your left leg up or whatever leg you didn't lift. <laughs> mm -hmm. Shannon, can you see me? I can. Well, now I can, but I couldn't see you doing it because the camera's too high. Okay. You could lower it just a little bit. I can't see the floor of you. Okay, so now the rest of us are gonna go up into Sheer Shasana. Or if you've already done your Shirshasana, you can um, do Prasarya Padottanasana. But we'll just, just go up for, you know, one minute. How's that? If it, even 30 seconds. So I'm about one um, forearm's length away from the wall. Or you can be all the way at the wall. I interlace the palms. I press the forearms down. Take my head right in the back of my hands. Walk up and go up. So my heels can scrape up the wall or balance away from the wall. Hmm. Keep pressing the forearms, moving those outer deltoids in and up. Shoulder blades in and up. Make your legs tired in Shirshasana. They have to work to support the trunk. So move the buttock rim deeply forward or in and take your thighs back. Oh boy, 15 minutes. Okay, if you're down from your Shirshasana, um, take what you need for some of the seated forward bends. I'm going to take my blanket like this and tri-fold it. Let's see. So your right leg is going to be in Virasana first, but you'll sit up on uh, the height with both buttocks. Spread the buttocks flesh apart, sit on those buttock bones, or take the buttock bones back, better yet, and sit more on your thighs. In the seated poses, that's what we're sitting on. We're sitting on our legs. OK. 
Okay. Yeah, you can sit facing forward, facing the camera. You don't have to give me the side view, but I'm giving you the side view for a reason. So both my buttock bones are on the support, and it's Trianga Mukha Ekapada Paschimottanasana. So I'm going to take my, you will take your right leg back in Virasana. So whatever height you need to sit so that both buttocks are level. You may need to sit up on more height. Two, three blankets, it's fine. <clears throat> okay, so remember way back in the beginning of class in the chair work, how I asked you to, you know, we have to fold from this hip crease and the trunk has to go forward. So we're gonna use a little momentum with this type of, um, this version of Trangamuka. So it looks something like this, of, of, um, it's four times, but the fourth time you hold. So you reach up, Utita, Urdva Mukha, and down. So it's one, two, three, and four. Okay, and then wherever you can catch or you can't catch, you hold the strap. Either way. And then bend the elbows out to the side. Oh, um, you may have support for your head. Take a, take a brick there. So here, support for the head to be with yourself. Feel the even extension of both sides of your trunk going forward. Bear the weight on both of those thigh bones. Okay, stay there, but inhale and come up. Ah, wrong side. Let's do that. So now I'm going to show you from this side. You're staying on that same side. The leg that was forward is still forward. The leg that was in Virasana is still in Virasana, which is your right leg. You'll bring your left leg up. Hold the bottom of your foot with both hands. I am absolutely fine with picking your leg up. So do you see now how my shin, shin bone, the, the thigh bone is completely vertical. All right, so watch first. Kranjasana, in between Tranga Mukha Ekapada Paschimottanasana. So do so you see where my knee is? Keep your knee as close to your trunk as possible. Lift up the trunk. So already I'm not allowing the back to not lift. I'm lifting my back up, my back ribs up and in. And then I just straighten that leg. Fun, huh? Or, okay, so it's not coming. Your leg is further away from you. Let's say your leg is here. That's fine. It's here. But lift your back up. Kranchasana. Lift your back up, look up. Lengthen both sides of the trunk, just like you did in Parshvottanasana. Elbows wide in Uttita Hasta Parangusasana. Keep reaching this bottom leg, this inner knee down. And then release. Okay, second side would be your uh, left leg in your wrestling, correct? <clears throat> Spread that buttock flesh of the straight leg. Sit evenly. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale forward four times. The last one you hold. 
feel like that that side body is lengthening over that leg surrender the heart towards that leg and last one reach out exhale hold keep your hips level keep turning that virasana side towards the inner uh, right leg Virasana side body ribs have to turn towards that straight leg. Be in the pose, stay in the pose. If you resist, the pain will persist. Do the work and allow the pain to dissipate. Inhale, come up to the concave. Inhale, reach up and release. Okay, I'm gonna sit facing you now. Sit on what you need for Parshva Jandu Shirshasan. Parshva Jandu Shirshasan. So you'll have your right leg bent out to the side. Sit in Dandasana, spread Beryl, we didn't do the other side with the extension of the leg. Oh, you're right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I did it. I did it. Thank you. So you're, yeah, you're, hold the both feet. Thank you, Karen. Take the leg up. Lift your back up. Look at that foot. Keep your trunk as close to the leg as possible. You can use a strap. Yeah, that's it, Marsha. Now move your back ribs in, in and up. I, I don't care. I don't care about a change in the leg. I want to see your back ribs. I want to see these move in, in, in and up. Mm -hmm. All right, and then release. Sorry about that. That's what happens. All right, now sit in Dandasana. Roll those inner upper thighs in so the backs of the thighs are not too broad. Sit up tall and straight. Take your right leg out. So I'm, I'm not using, remember we did this maybe last week, a couple of weeks ago where I'm not using any musculature of this right leg. I'm helping it totally with my arms, hands, and then I turn that shin towards the floor. Sit straight and evenly. Turn those right ribs towards the inner right leg. It, look where your navel is. And turn the right side of your navel towards this inner left leg. Okay, so this is harsh by John Shirsasana. So we're just reaching up, reaching up, and then I'm gonna put the hand along, maybe just above my knee, and I'm gonna get part of my blanket back here and turn the trunk without letting this knee come forward. Keep this knee back, turn your trunk to face your side wall. Roll that left shoulder back. And turn, turn as much as possible. Parshva Janushirchasana. Still this straight leg, hamstring to butt, pull it back in. Calf to heel, turn as much as possible. Mm. We're just trying to get a little bit opened up for Salama Sarangasana. So returning the chest, rolling the shoulders back. All right, and then turn back to face forward. Take that leg, extend. Siddhandasana. This is my teacher's 
Oh, favorite pose these days. <laughs> Parshva Janakshirshasana. So turn your left thigh up. I help it, I extend, I release that buttock flesh towards the um, outside of the knee, and I turn the trunk to face forward. This straight leg goes back towards the, so hamstring to buttock flesh. Okay, reach up your left arm, inhale, reach up, exhale, Parshva Janu Shirtasana. If you can grab some of your blanket or your sticky mat, turn your chest towards that wall, side wall, and roll your right shoulder back. Keep reaching that knee away from you, the bent knee away from you as you turn more. <sighs> Back ribs turning, navel band turning towards that inside of the straight leg. And release, I'd love to repeat that, but I'm running out of time. So, um, have your support that you might normally use for wall salamba sarvangasana. Wall salamba sarvangasana. I'll show you what mine is, but don't, just have it nearby. Have your staff nearby. There's mine. Okay. Have a strap. I've just got it looped. And I'm going to make sure, make sure that the buckle's not going to be near my hands. So it's going to be something like this. Just put it underneath your thighs there. Lay down for Chattuspadasana. Um, 20 to 30 seconds, three times to prepare us for Salamba Sarvangasana. So here, here I go. I'm, I'm really, uh, I've got my heels on my buttocks. Come down, scoot the buttocks forward more. Lay down. <clears throat> I hold on to my strap and I pull the strap apart as I tuck my shoulders under. Can you see that? Oh, already my chest is open. I'm pulling on the strap as if to pull it apart strongly and I'm pressing my upper arms into the floor. My uh, fist into the floor as I pull that strap apart. Tuck and roll, tuck and roll. Pull the strap, inhale. On an exhalation, I lift that buttock rim and thigh muscle so much to move the shoulder blades deeper in to the back to lift and open my chest. If it's not happening, come up onto your heels, lift your trunk tips and lift that, those thighs more. Pull the strap apart as if you're trying to break the strap. Nice. Okay, exhale down. Let's just do one more of those. That was so good. You guys only need to do it one more time. All right. You cannot pull the strap apart too hard. To help you tuck those shoulders under, try it again. Tuck the shoulders under, pull the strap apart. Tuck and tuck and tuck. Lift your, the bottom buttock rim up and up and up. Now you have to push the shoulder blades towards the chin. The back, your shoulder blades are on your back. So imagine your shoulder blades coming towards your chin. Okay, exhale down. Okay, so those of you who know shoulder stand very well, you don't need to watch. But you know, I'm, I'm a little perplexed on seeing 
some of the other, even some of the other yoga tree teachers teach um, because they're saying, okay, if you know shoulder skin, you know, do it. So I'm like, well, we need to start working on that. So I'm going to put my blanket stack for shoulder stand. And you, some of you have been with me have heard this saying, a buttock cheek and a half away from the wall. So that's subjective. You have to figure out what that is for you. How I figured it out is I come here and I sit down and about half of this buttock is touching the blanket and half is not. It's pretty, pretty close. I would say this space is probably 10 inches. But again, it's relative to the length of your leg bones, the length of your torso, etc. Okay, it's um, if you do regular shirtshasana and you want to take a strap, you may take a strap. At the wall, it's not as um, vital to have a strap because you have the wall there. So if you don't, if you're not sure what you're doing, just watch first. Otherwise, if you know what you're doing, you may go up. So I sit very close to the wall. Get the legs up. So you see my buttocks are down in this little hole. I extend the back of the length in the back of my neck towards the crown of my head. Now I have the wall to help me climb up and tuck my shoulders under. Tuck and roll, tuck and roll, tuck and roll. So now it's just my big toes. So I keep tucking the shoulders under, press the forearms, the upper arms down, get my hands on my back, on my skin, I prefer. You can push your toes into the wall to move that buttock crease forward. Press the upper arms down, and then you can try coming off the wall or not. Press that buttock rim deeper forward and keep your thighs back. There should be a, a slight bend at that front of the ankle. Look at your two railroad ties of your legs. Keep them parallel to each other and parallel inner to outer. If you get tired, you can scrape the heels up the wall, but keep that buttock rim in. Pull it up, hamstring to buttock. Ooh. Buttock to hamstring. Where the two shall meet, nothing shall be weak. <laughs> so if you get tired, you're here. Ready to come down, toes touch the wall, release the arms, untuck the shoulders, slowly start to roll down, <clears throat> and then slide back until your buttocks or buttocks and just about your waist are on your um, support. And you can do a little Vicarita Karani here. Just take the arms out and your legs are at an angle from the wall. Just rest here. Be with yourself. Go inside. Yoga is a very solitary practice for a good reason. Forces us to deal with ourselves. Nothing else really matters after all.
Now, after your breath has come to a normal place, bend your knees, put your feet uh, on the floor. Don't take your, um, you know, move yourself away from the blankets. You can keep your blankets largely there, but if you're long limbed like I am, I'm going to have to scoop the blankets slightly with me. So now my thighs are going to be up on the blankets. Shavasana. See that your feet aren't touching anything. Allow yourself to be broad and open, expansive, so you can go inward. Close your eyes completely. If you need to, to look up and see your alignment. This is, is good after the forward bends in case any of the work aggravated the lower back when we support the thighs. It really grounds the lower back. But if, if you're not comfortable with this, you can just take the blankets away. Take a couple longer, slower, sounded breaths as you allow yourself to become quiet inside. Relax all the muscles in your face. Your eyes drop back like pebbles. Dropping into a pond somewhere. Drop to the back of the skull. All the muscles in your face. Now allow the face to sort of spread from the, the midline. Allow your facial muscles to spread towards the ears. Especially mindful of the mouth cavity, the tongue. The jawline. Your lips should just be naturally just a little bit apart. Let the shoulders deeply relax. Let the abdomen fill out the floor. Appreciate your expansiveness. That, that's you. It's all you. After all, we must live with ourselves. So be with yourselves completely here. Just a couple more breaths. Take one longer, slower, deeper inhalation. On your exhalation, raise your arms up. On your, and, and then also bring your knees in and roll gently towards your right side. Stay on your right side for a few breaths. Breathe. 
Left hand near the chest. Head looks at the floor. Lift yourself up. Head is still looking at the floor. Right hand has come to help. Head is still down. Swing the legs around towards your blanket side. Eyes can still be closed. Can you manage to lift those blankets with the eyes closed? Put them right on top of your shin. Spread the thighs apart. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fully surrender. Paschimottanasana. And if this is way too much height, get rid of some of it. And pull yourself forward, feeling that hip crease uh, deep, deepen in the groins, feeling the, the arms helping you lengthen the trunk forward. Surrendering completely that busy brain towards the legs. Okay, and then inhale, sit up. straight, bring your hands to your heart in gratitude for this practice and gratitude mostly for the community that we have built at Austin Yoga Tree and continue to build and continue to keep and for all the teachers who've come before us. Namaste. Mm -hmm.